Every year on the 25th of June, the International Day of Seafarers is commemorated, honoring the brave individuals who navigate uncharted waters, reach continents, and play a vital role in keeping global trade afloat. This special day provides an opportunity to reflect on the invaluable contributions of seafarers to the maritime sector. The theme of this year uh, being uh, MAPOL at 50, which in simple words, uh, covers environmental protection is key to the seafaring uh, profession. Seafarers are at the front line of implementing international convention regulations and standards at sea. They spend a good part of their professional life at sea. Therefore, uh, when we encourage uh, seafarers, we train them properly, uh, improve their awareness of the uh, importance of environmental protection, this forms the key and the heart of the global endeavor to protect the maritime environment. Despite the challenges they face, seafarers work tirelessly to ensure the safe and efficient transportation of goods, upholding international standards like MAPOL that safeguard our oceans and environment. The seafaring um, industry provides employment to millions, both directly and indirectly in the value chain. And noting that 90% um, of the transport of goods in the world takes place uh, through the sea, then it's the urgent need to look at that environment and care of it. And therefore, the importance of implementing um, the MARPO Convention, uh, which speaks to the environment uh, of the sea. Speaking at the commemoration of the day in Mombasa, the CEO of Bandari Maritime Academy, Mr. Francis Muraya, shares the Academy's ambitious goals of training 5,000 seafarers each year to meet the growing demand for seafaring and the development of maritime pollution control training. And the Academy has set a target of training 5,000 seafarers every year. Um, and therefore, um, building a capital base for this country. Uh, through foreign remissions because employment at sea uh, pays very well. Um, the Academy has also developed curricula on uh, maritime uh, pollution control um, through the interagency teams uh, with the support of the, the GoBru uh, project in the coast region and therefore there will be more trainings in this area uh, to support uh, what KMA does in terms of the regulating that industry. The sector that was historically male-dominated has now embraced the inclusion of women. As an association, we advocate for more women to be employed, to get opportunities to be trained in the maritime industry. WOMESA really is, a, is an association that advocates for this. Outside, there are no more jobs. So many of my members are already employed, but for the youth, they would wish that this is a more advanced in employment and in opportunities. Culturally, that uh, the seafaring area was uh, male-dominated. But don't forget, uh, maritime is not just about going to the sea. We have maritime lawyers, we have mar maritime academicians, we have even, I want to mention, a very special person who is now going out to become the Secretary General. She has proposed her candidature, uh, Abasenda Nancy Gargidu, we are hoping that she becomes our next Secretary General in IMO and that will be a very big step towards encouraging women in the maritime sector because that's the highest level of maritime. Mr. Mbwana Abdallah from Kenya Coast Blue Economy says societal norms do not prevent women from pursuing a career at sea but rather it is the restrictive design of ships that are not accommodating. You know it is very tough especially for an Akin are disabled. It is design haiko friendly kwa disabled people so it is not a culture culture haimzui mwanamke ama kwenda baharini lakini ni ile umbile la lile meli ndo halimrusu maana akiwa anaosema ana ugonjwa wa tumbo hapo hawezi kupata matibabu akiwa na mimba akiwa yuko kwa maternity so those are the challenges it's not cultural but rather uh, maternal the day highlights the essential role of seafarers in driving efforts towards ocean sustainability. Charlie Wandera for Geltex Media.